Ah, brilliant. Infinite power. If only it was true. We could make millions. Be great. And our energy problems would be over. I decided to move this section up because many of us are not lead APs. And I think that it's important to discuss some of these things before we go any further. This is a bonus presentation. So you should be seeing this on your own computer before you attend the sessions. Hope you're doing that. It also includes some bonus noises to help keep you awake while you're doing so. Lead V3, that's what we're using. And Lead V4 is now available, but V3 is still in play until June of 2015. I recommend that you take the lead exam now because the tests might get harder, plus you lose the experience of the people that can help you to study because uh, we're more familiar with V3. So you'd be on your own. What is LEAD anyway? How do we get it? Why do we even want it? And what's it going to cost? All valid, important questions. And we will help answer those questions with this session. Lead means leadership and the whole idea is the whole building approach. It encourages and guides a collaborative integrated design and construction process. It includes an expanding rating system involving things like core and shell, renovations, interiors, residential projects, healthcare, and others. It helps us to optimize environmental and economic factors within our projects. The integrated design approach is not limited to LEED, but all green building certifications and certification agencies use this in some form or another. But it really should be considered uh, something that needs consideration of every project. It involves the whole team collaborating at a higher level to produce better results. There are four levels of LEED certification. Certified, Silver, Gold, and Platinum. Of course, Platinum takes a little more work than the others. As far as LEED is concerned, buildings are certified and professionals are accredited. But that's just semantics. We need accreditation as GPD, LEED, ARCSA, PE, CPD, etc. Because it demonstrates that we are professionals and that we should know at least something about what we're doing. Of course, there's no guarantees of that, but it shows that we made an effort and that we have at least achieved some level of accomplishment. But the biggest reason and the biggest benefit is that you'll learn a lot in the process that helps you be better at all of these things. It helps us to fulfill our, our desired destiny. But after that, it's a three-step process. Step one, of course, is to register the project. With that come some lead letter templates, some CIR access, and online project listing. Step two would be technical support. We receive a reference package, some credit inquiries and rulings. Step three is the actual certification of the building. But that only comes after documentation submittal and USGBC review. 
and I'm glad you asked that question. CIR means credit interpretation request. It could also mean credit interpretation ruling, depending on if it's before or after. We get access to the previous rulings, which may match our design question, and so you might already have an answer based on someone else's project, which could be good. Saves you time and a little bit of money. Points are available in six categories. Sustainable site planning, water efficiency, energy and atmosphere, materials and resources, indoor environmental quality, and innovation credits. Points are distributed a little differently depending upon the type of rating you're looking for. For instance, in this case, this example is for new construction. Here we're looking at operations and maintenance. So it's just a, a little bit different. Same basic stuff. And then if we look at another example, lead for homes, it has even different values. So, you know, it has a different mix of concerns depending on the project. This is a comparison between lead V2 and V3. So the center column where it says new percent, that's lead V3, previous percent was lead two. And you see, we didn't have any regional bonus credits under lead version two, which we do have now under lead V3. We'll go over these points more in uh, other sessions that are coming up. But you can see that there's a shift from materials to more energy and more water and less points for materials and resources. So I think that's a good thing. Uh, everything's important, but water and energy are our prime concerns as engineers. Certification benefits include third party validation of achievement, you can qualify for a growing array of state and local government incentives, contribute to growing knowledge base, and you get a LEED certification plaque to mount on the building and some certificates and other nice things like that. And you also get some marketing exposure through the USGBC website. You might be one of the case studies and there are always uh, media announcements. So you get some stuff there. And despite what some people say, there's actually some real benefits within that. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not really right. But some people think you're doing it just to be a nice guy and to be recognized for it. But that's not true. There are real life financial benefits and that should make everybody happen, even the Donald. So some of them would be uh, reduced operating costs, reduced maintenance costs, higher valuation of the building, improved health of the occupants, which means improved performance of the occupants. And that also ties in with reduced absenteeism. That saves money. And some people only care about the money. Well, this is the money. Some people might say that they don't care about the people, but people are the most expensive part of the building. And I'll show you how that's true. In this case, uh, reduction in absenteeism, you can see among major corporations has been quite substantial. And improved health of occupants equals improved performance of occupants and reduced absenteeism. And that translates into what? Cash. So that should make the Donald happy. This is huge. The total cost of constructing, maintaining, and providing energy for the building is 10% of the total cost of the building, even if we only project a 20-year useful lifespan of the project. Sounds pretty low to me. The other 90 plus percent of the costs are the people. So just imagine uh, 1,000 people making $100,000 a year for 20 years. We're talking about two billion dollars here so who could argue with that kind of logic that's a lot of money the building didn't cost that much
And these are very conservative numbers. So we can look at it even closer. In this case, we added another slice for the cost of green. Green building skeptics will argue that it's impossible to build green without paying a big cost premium. But real world examples show that you can complete a LEED certified green building project for an average of 2% more in upfront costs, and sometimes even below standard market construction costs. We need to make the right decisions to make this happen. But based on what we've seen, if sustainable systems add another couple of percent to the construction costs, we're still only talking about 3.02% of the total cost over the life cycle of the building versus 3%. And that's what that green slice is. Can you even see the green slice of this pie? That is powerful stuff. Check out that link for more information. So say it with me, little or no budgetary impact. I don't think I heard everybody, so let's try that again. Little or no budgetary impact. Again, this is huge. Nobody, somehow, people have overlooked this. I think we should be asking the question, how much does it cost not to build green? because you're losing out on so much. You get higher valuation of the building. A rule of thumb would be uh, divide the reduction in annual operating cost by 10% to get the increased value of the building, which could be up to $4 increased valuation for every $1 spent. You also get higher visibility and marketability and reduced insurance and risk of liability. Again, healthier occupants, greater occupant satisfaction. That means less turnover, lower environmental impacts, and streamlined regulatory approvals. That's another thing that means a lot of uh, financial benefits to the client because most places give you a fast track if you have a lead project. So you can get permitting done faster. Saving money. This chart shows some examples of what you might expect based on surveys of owners from 2010. And so you can get some idea of some of the benefits that you get and the actual value of them. These claims have been supported by multiple studies. I mean, here you see five different studies quoted. There are many studies and they all show the same thing. It gets even better because this can now become a cycle of increased benefits. So check out this link for more information. Uh, it's down at the lower right hand corner and that will help you see even more. More studies, same results shows increased uh, value, uh, return on the investment improvement, etc. Higher rents, you could charge more money for the building. So again, these things depend on what kind of building it is. The green office of the future. Well, it is inevitable. It's an inevitable future and the future is here. Most of these things we deal with every day. I mean, if you look at it, there's hardly anything here that you probably haven't done. There might be something, maybe you haven't done any cogeneration or green roofs, maybe, but um, it's coming. Inevitable. There are other points related to plumbing, innovation credits, energy credits, and the regional credits. When we look at domestic hot water systems, we could look at high efficiency water heaters or maybe it's uh, some other kind of system that's tying in with high efficiency boilers on the HVAC side. Maybe it's so-called instantaneous or on-demand water heaters 
or maybe a solar thermal hot water system. With booster pumps, we look at VFDs and maybe some elevated storage tanks. Uh, elevated storage tanks, like you see in a lot of municipalities, uh, it allows them to pump water up quietly during the during the night and then they have it stored for the peak loads during the day reducing their pumping requirements vfds why wouldn't you use a vfd on every project for for every pump because you get a soft start soft stop protects the motor helps it run better makes it smoother and you don't need a soft start so it actually costs less waste heat recovery is something that we'll talk about in other sessions and we can show you how you can actually make that work surprisingly well for surprisingly little investment. So do you have any other questions? Okay, that's great. Thank you for listening and I'll see you for the next presentation. We'll look at lead more in upcoming modules.